Welcome to a very special episode of Overtime with two people that I've known pretty much my whole life. My dad, Tom Crean, and then Coach Izzo, Michigan State head coach. We, I grew up with you guys and your family, spent so many summers at your lake house, and what his daughter is one of my best friends. And yeah, so I just wanted to talk to them. They're very good friends, known each other how many years? Well, pushing over 30 now. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, Very definitely long 35 time. years. Since you were still in college. Exactly. So exactly. you guys coached together how many years? 95 to 2000. 95 to 99. 95 to 99. But we actually uh, got my start with him uh, when Tom was the associate head coach at 89-90. I didn't know you because I didn't know your mom yet. No. But 1989-90. Uh, and all we did is win a championship together that year, too. So, yeah, I was an assistant. He was a GA. And Remember the summer before that when uh, your dad was a nut man? He would, I mean, he wasn't even an assistant yet. He was kind of an alpha, but I took him on this trip with us. We drove all over the Midwest to different camps. Remember that? Yeah, we started in Lansing. We drove to Pittsburgh. We moved on to Cincinnati, Cincinnati then and then went to Rensselaer, Indiana. <laughs> and uh, I don't think there's anybody else that ever done that for me like that. But he did, and uh, it was incredible. Yeah, we had a good time. And then you guys were both, both in Maui, 1995. What was that like? It was your first year as a head coach, It right? was my first year, and uh, your dad and I, we we were kind of wet behind the ears, you know. We didn't have any idea. And the first game was against Chaminade. And all I remember is uh, the night before, Judd was here and Magic was here, and they were sitting right behind us. And we were up one or two on Chaminade, which wasn't very good. No. We found a way to win it, and that was probably the most exciting win just because it was the first. Yeah. And you had a great hotel room, I read. I did have a, remember that room, Tom? I sure the do. Top of the, I sure do. I don't think I've ever had one like that yeah. since. My <laughs> wife will never let me forget it when we don't have a room that looks like that either. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not but, sure I'll ever be in yeah, that, like that. that was big time. That, that just hit that we were in a completely different realm of life. You know, when when you're in Maui and now you're the head coach and you have a, a room like that, and then I don't think any of us really understood the opportunities that were in front of us. But um, I knew this, that working for, working for Tom was working with Tom. And yeah. that's what you want people to feel like when they're with you, that they're working with them. And I know that I never wanted him to not be successful and worked every day to help him be that way because I knew he was doing the same for me. He'd already proven that long before I'd ever gone to work for him. I think of all the things, Megan, that is one of the things that we both probably try to find, and it's hard to find, is uh, you were teammates with your head coach and your assistant. I mean, there was a, a bond there that that was one of the seemed like an assistant job was to make you successful. Yeah. Now everybody's in such silos and they worry about themselves. And I always said we team taught it, we team coached it because um, you know he's given me credit, but I give him a lot of credit. I would never be where I was. We built the culture. It was four years. There was blood, sweat, tears, um, arguments with players. I mean, I think back, but the culture was built then. And, Thank God it's kind of lasted for me where you moved around with me. Yeah, I think when you look back at an example of coming to Maui, um, one reason Tom has been successful and one thing that I've tried to always take with me among so many other things is you never take any of it for granted. You don't take hotel rooms for granted. You don't take trips for granted. You don't take opportunities to coach for granted. You don't take uh, a player for granted. You, you try to do everything you can do to make that person better in every possible way that you can. And I, I learned that from Tom because there was never going to be a day or a night, whether it would be in Maui, whether it would be in East Lansing or anywhere in between, that he would let the sun go down on a problem. And I think that's what happens too much right now in leadership, too much in coaching. It's too easy to be mad about the wrong things and not try to fix it and make it better. But you have to fix it and make it better because that's where the success comes from. And I don't think Tom would ever be the success that he is if he'd ever taken any of that for granted at any point in time in his life. But because he never took it for granted, he's continued to have so many things happen for him because of the way he works and treats people. Just think, him from Mount Pleasant, me from the UP, you know, we're kind of from, as you said, when I walked into that place in Maui, I'd never seen a place like that yeah. where I was from. And, uh, I think we appreciate, you know, those kind of things and never forgot where we came from and that's the way we treated our, our families and uh, 
and even you when you're just born. And uh, when I think of how you grew up, and it was uh, it was a family affair, and it's remained that way for both of us. Yeah, it always has been. He's always been good about that. You guys have been always good about that, and that's what I really like. Well, I learned so much from Tom, right? Yeah. I mean, and the thing that was so great about being there for four years is because he was brand new was one thing, but because of his humility of wanting to be great, he was always open to ideas. He was open to suggestions. He was very clear on what he wanted, but he was also very clear that he wanted to be better, right? And that there, it didn't matter, and I took this, I think I was raised with it, but I took this for sure. It didn't matter whose idea it was, as long as it got done correctly and right. Would you agree, Tom, egos weren't in it? It was no. about finding a way no. to win. It didn't no, matter exactly. if I was the head coach. You, that's why I say we team coached it. And I, I, you know, I yearn for that still uh, sometimes, you know, because I always knew that it was more important to you that I was successful than even you to be successful. Yeah. And, and, really, I, and, and I is. thought I tried to, you know, I remember your first job interview, you know, we brought the AD, I think it was to St. Louis, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he came to St. Louis. We uh, met in Milwaukee. Yeah. We met in Milwaukee because we were playing the first two rounds of the tournament in Milwaukee. And um, I had my first interview there, and then they came to St. Louis. I'd actually flown back to Milwaukee on the way to St. Louis. Yep. And, and then they came. And then they came out to uh, Tampa for our first Final Four. And but, that's what was cool is we were in it to help each other, you know. And, and because of that, there were no jealousies, and it was like happy for one another, you know. And he was happy for me, I was happy for him. And you know, it's kind of funny because I've got two great friends in the coaching profession, my buddy Mariucci and of course Tom, and I've kind of stayed. But both, yeah. Mariucci and Tom, moved around, you know, which I think is more difficult. And that's the respect. He's had to build programs and build his culture through two, three times. And I've got to use the culture him and I built, and I've kind of <laughs> just sustained it. Yeah. A little easier for me. But fun. What's fun? So what was the best win you guys had by coaching together? Wow. One you know, of the best. The first Michigan win because we got yeah. beaten bad. But yeah. I'm not sure you could have a better win than beating Kentucky to go to a final. No. No. Yeah. Two Kentucky wins for me were pretty important. Yeah. The one with you and the one that I had at Marquette. Well, yeah, yeah when we – actually Indiana. three. And then the one at Indiana. Isn't it amazing? Two at Indiana. That Kentucky has been a huge part of our turning points. Well, I watched coaching. the game. I can't remember – where I was, because I ended up doing your game on TV. I was uh, part of the halftime thing when you beat Kentucky in Minnesota. Way to Minnesota. Yeah. And then we were all cheering. I mean, that's yeah. that's what's cool about yeah. when you got real friends. And it's, it's hard to have friends in this profession. Uh, as you know, with your brothers both in and they playing the Super Bowl together. I mean, you got a lot of headache on you, man. You got a no. lot of those things, but it's pretty cool when you get to do it. Yeah, and you guys were at that Final Four when we were there. We've gone to your Final Fours. The those are, got those the some of my best memories. Yes. Got the chair in my basement still. It's awesome. Yeah, we've had some good times together. And so when we were at Indiana, we played you guys at least twice a year. What was that like? Because that was not that was normal painful. at Marquette. Awful. Yeah, that was painful. The first one was the worst. The first one was the worst when we were at Marquette. And we played them in uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was the worst. It was also playing without our best player. So that, that had yeah. a little to do with it. Yeah. But that was the worst because it, it, it was so uh, odd to yeah. not want Tom to win. Right? <laughs> and and because I always have. I always have and still do, right? And so it, 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 it became more normal as we went against each other at Indiana. Yeah. But it never became something that you would even remotely enjoy. Because no. I want him to win, and I know he wants me to win. Because never, we want him to be successful. To it. No. In no. fact, I said even even here out in Maui, you know, I wish we were in different brackets. But at the same time, I think one thing I've done as I've gotten older in this profession, I can look at it this way too. If we both win the first night, and if they beat us, or if we beat them, if they beat us, I can cheer for them to win a championship now. Yeah. You know, that's where I think we all mature a little bit, but but I don't think we'll ever. There's certain people you never want to play against. And I remember John and Jim in that in that uh, yeah, that you know, that world championship. I mean, I mean for me it was painful. It, you know, it was for my cool. grandparents it was painful. Oh, yeah. But even for John and Jim, and I think if you really have a love for somebody, 
it is. And if you could just get through it and say, but at least one of us gets to do something. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I love that because you guys are the only other team, one of the only other teams I'll ever cheer for, except when we're playing you. <laughs> That's fair. I'd be sitting in the box with Rocky, like I would be screaming for our team, she'd be screaming for your team. That was, that was not fun. But at the end of the day, we all I've told Megan wrong. about the, the first three years and how hard it was to build the program. And uh, I used it, it's been used before, but I always use the Burger King oh. reference because we would go to a Burger King that was right near the Frandor Hall, which was right very close to the Michigan State campus. And it was usually mid afternoon before practice, and it was either to commiserate, to plan practice, or to do both. All right? And uh, Tom, it's my favorite story. The one time him and I went, and for some reason I had the radio on and it was talk radio, and it, and it wasn't whether they were going to fire me, it was when they were going to fire me. So we went there, and I had that big meeting, and I had to have, and I had everybody I in remember. the room. And after that meeting, we went 18 and four, we were like yeah. four and three. Oh, wow. And it changed everything, and that's where we kind of decided, we need everybody on board, not just a couple of us. Yeah. And so we put more pressure on the secretaries, on the trainers, on the equipment man. We had everybody in that meeting, remember that? We did, because the, the only other time there was a meeting like that was the very first full staff meeting you ever had as a head yeah. coach. Yeah. And I'll never forget it because there were so many things, but the common theme was if you win, everybody wins. Yes. But if you don't win, everybody loses. So we have to be in it together. And it was the most profound meeting that sounds simple, but is so incredibly difficult and hard. But that's what happened. That's you know, what's you know, happened Tom, in Michigan State. And I'm living proof of it. Those four years and what we built, and we had the janitor in that meeting because we needed somebody to jimmy the door open because our building was almost brand new and guys came in. That janitor ended up with a national championship ring. And that's kind of the way we said, everybody's gonna win or everybody's gonna lose. But it's getting harder to do it that way it because is. not as many people are vested in, uh, in the program. Everybody's so siloed. So we're gonna continue to be the two that keep it a family affair. And uh, it's been fun watching him he built his programs. He did an unbelievable job at Marquette. And then Indiana really, really, truly was unbelievable. And I think there you learn, too, that if if everybody's not on board, exactly, from the president to the AD to the boosters, you know, to build great programs, you need everybody on board. And the advantage I've had is staying there. It's got an advantage of disadvantage, but, but I think that's the unique thing. And watching him having to build them, or when my buddy Mariucci was in having to build them, that's hard to do. That's harder than staying, for, trust me. But I think it's, it's because of what you've done, because of what we did together there, there's always been, it's, it's more than a blueprint and it's more than a vision. It is a way of life. Yeah. And yeah. you have to keep trying to get that way of life. And, and you have to keep making sure that everybody understands how much they matter. It doesn't matter, like he just said with the janitor, it does not matter what your title is, it does not matter what your experience is, it doesn't matter who you are, it matters that you care about the team and that you're invested in everybody being successful. And when you feel a part of it, and Tom has proven time and time again that if you give him your best, you will receive his best back. And I think that's what's made it so unique and, and that's as much of why he has a Hall of Fame career as, as anything else because without that there's not the players, there's not the wins. Mm -hmm. Not without the way that he has put everybody in place. That they, I heard this a long time ago, and Tom's group uh, always exemplifies this. The culture of your team starts with the culture of your staff and your building. No question. And that's what Tom has done and has never been afraid, and I'm living proof of this too, never been afraid to tell you what you've got to do to get better. And if you didn't take it from a place of love from him, then that was your fault. And I think that's what, that's what makes his situation so unique and that what I aspire to constantly now as we rebuild or, or build a third program. We got, we got the, I got the thing, the three L's, and your dad was all of them. The three L's are, to a player, do you like it, do you love it, or do you live it? Well, the reason Riley is with him now and Steven's with me, we lived it. We didn't like it. We didn't just love it. We lived it. It, it, yeah. it was part of our family. Our family lived it. You lived yep. it. 
Joni lived it, Loopy lived it, you know, so when you live it, um, I never, ever would question what he's doing as far as work ethic, because yeah, like it was that. just going to get done. Yeah. And not many people live it. No. A lot of people no. like what they do, there's some people love what they do, not many people live what they do. I love that. So Steven, your son, is a freshman with you now, and Riley is a student, so, student assistant, assistant so talk, talk about that. Steven well, Steven was going to be a manager. Yeah, so what happened with that? Well, he just one day he saw some names. Bill Self, uh, John Calipari, Mike Krzyzewski. They all had their sons as walk-ons. Oh, wow. And he said, well, maybe I'll walk on. I said, well, I don't even know if he's going to make his high school team. Steven's a little guy. So I, I said, that'll be his goal. If he makes his team, I'll let him walk on. Yeah. You know, it's, it's been fun, and it's been fun, as I'm sure Tom agrees, even with you guys and Raquel. We missed out on some great times, and so we're trying to make up for some of those yeah. times. That's what's cool about doing this interview. Yeah. You know, we get to be with you again, just like no, you were I when you were it. this big. I know, Amazing. 24 years. <laughs> you were too young to even be here. <laughs> I know. It was, my, it was the year I was born. Was exactly. The first year. So what's Riley? What's it like having Riley? Well, it, it's it's unique. In, in Riley's situation, is he he's always loved basketball, just absolutely loved it, lived it. But he was also really good at baseball, yeah. and and spent a lot of time at that, and, and had a real strong passion for that. But over a period of time, the passion for wanting to coach, the pa he's always had the passion to coach since he was a little boy. But he was also a good player, and he was a very good baseball player. So he he had that. But it just the passion for wanting to do this and making it his career just overtook him. And we just wanted to make sure that when you make a decision like that and you give up something that you're really good at, like baseball, that you really, really know what you're doing. Because once you give a sport up, you really can't go back to it as a player. And so we wanted to make sure that he was there, and, and he is. And he's done a fantastic job. Uh, there's, I, I compare him to a 28, 30-year-old. Sure. I mean, I he's know like a 28, 30-year-old he's like there more than he is. Yes, that's cool. He's got the mind of a 28 to 30 year old in basketball. Like I wasn't, I wasn't close to what he knows about basketball and seeing the game. Probably even when I went to work for you, and I'd had five years experience. Dad's lying. No, no, I don't think I am. I don't think I am. I don't I, think I, he is. No, I, I, I had the, I had experience. Live it. I had experience. You. Yeah, yeah, I had experience, but I didn't have. Like he's, he just sees it, right? He maybe maybe sees he has it. more knowledge of yeah. it because he's grown up in it. Yeah. But I don't know many people that have more passion for it yeah. than he has. And I think yeah. he's got that, and just like you have for doing this. Uh, just like uh, Rocky and Steven do for what they do. So yeah. it's, a, it's a tremendous thing. But neither, none of us would be here without Loopy and Joni. So no. there's yeah. no doubt about that. Literally and figuratively, we would be here without it. So. Literally. Well, thank you so much for doing this. And I hope we do play each other on Tuesday, because that means we both won on Monday. There you go. So. Looking forward well, to that. Megan, let me say, I'm proud of you. Thank this you. This is pretty awesome that you're doing something like this. I'm glad to be part of one of your first ones. And Thank let's you. Hope you're that the this, first one I thought of. Let's hope this takes you off like it took us off 25 years ago. I would love that. Well, thank you guys so much, and have a good night.